Hey there, it's John, and in this video, I'm going to explain the subtotal function and how it works in the subtotal feature of Excel. So in the last video, I explained how subtotal works in the total row of a table. If you haven't seen that video yet, definitely go check it out after you watch this video. It'll explain a very useful feature for subtotal and the total row of Excel. But in this video, we're going to look at a different use case for the subtotal function. And that's in a scenario here, a layout of data where we have subtotal rows and then a grand total row at the bottom. So you can see all of these formulas here are using the subtotal function. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I'll delete this formula here and we'll rewrite it and we'll learn about how subtotal works. So we're gonna start typing equals and then subtotal. We'll tab into that. Now subtotal function really has two arguments. The first argument is the function number. And as you saw before, the function number was nine and subtotal allows us to do different calculation types. So instead of doing an average or some uh, function, we can do all that from the subtotal function by specifying this function number. So if we want to do a sum, we'll choose nine. You can also see down here, if you scroll down, we have uh, 100 level numbers. I explained that in the last video, and I'll briefly explain that in this video as well. But for now, we're going to choose nine, and then we can tab into that. We'll type a comma, and then we're just going to select the cells above that we want to create the subtotal for. So B4 to B5. We'll go ahead and close the parentheses there and hit enter, and that will give us a result of 12. So what the subtotal function does uh, is it allows us to just do the calculations on visible cells and also control that. So in this example, if we were to uh, apply this group or hide this group here, I should say collapse the group, you can see that we still get the subtotal of 12 here, even though the rows above are hidden. If we expand that back out, this does not change. So the difference here is if we were to choose instead of nine, I'll, again, I'll hit Alt down arrow here to show the, this list. If we were to choose 109 instead, we'll go ahead and do that, I'll tab into that, Oops, delete that there. So we just have 109 and hit enter. We still get 12 here. However, when we hide or collapse this group, either manually hide the rows or collapse the group, you can see that we now get a subtotal of zero. And that's because when we use those 100 level functions, that's excluding those hidden rows from the calculation there, those manually hidden rows. So in this scenario, we don't want that. In the previous video, when we talked about Excel tables, it's better to use that 100 level function and the total row of the table automatically adds that for us when we use the total row, so we don't really have to worry about that too much. But in this scenario here, we want to use the uh, single digit function numbers one through 11 to do those calculations. So we'll go ahead and hit enter there and we can now see we get uh, the correct result returned even when we've hidden the rows above. Now, one other thing that subtotal does that I did not mention in the last video is it also automatically excludes any other subtotal uh, functions or any other cells that contain the subtotal function. Uh, so for example, down here in the grand total row, we're still using the subtotal function. And as you can see, it's including those subtotal cells within its calculation here. This cell contains a subtotal function as well as this cell. It doesn't include this cell, but it could and it's going to bypass those cells. It's not going to include those cells in the result, so we still get the correct uh, grand total here. If we were to use the sum function here and sum all that, we'd basically be double counting the numbers because we'd be counting one, 11, and 12. But subtotal bypasses that, so this makes it a very useful function for when we're doing a subtotal or grouping like uh, we have in this example, anytime you have subtotal rows. And this could be used for some kind of P&L statement or financial statement where you have subtotal rows and then a grand total row at the bottom. This is a fantastic use for that. And one additional thing I almost forgot to mention is that using the subtotal like this can just save us time over having to write a sum function. So if we were to write a sum function here and then go through and try and select all the cells here for each of those subtotal rows to create that same result, uh, this can just take additional time, especially if you have uh, dozens or even hundreds of subtotal rows. So the subtotal function can save you a lot of time because you can just include everything, the entire range above, and it again automatically excludes any other subtotal functions within that range. 
So another thing I wanted to explain here is the subtotal feature, which is a bit different than the subtotal function in Excel. So this data here that we have actually started out uh, like this. As you can see here, we have a product column where the products are repeating, but they change as we go down the column. And then we have some columns with values, quantity, price, revenue, and shipping. And we can automatically create those subtotals in Excel with the subtotal feature. In order to do that, we'll just select any cell inside the data range here. We're going to go to the data tab on the ribbon. And over here in the outline section, we have a subtotal feature. And when we click this, that's going to bring up this subtotal uh, menu and it's going to give us some options. So what it's saying here at each change in the product column, it has a list of all the columns here, but at each change in the product column, we wanna use the sum, the function sum. Again, we can choose any function there within the subtotal function, but default is sum. We want to add a subtotal to, and these would be the subtotal rows, and then we can select which columns we want to add that subtotal to. So I wanted it for quantity. I didn't need it for price because it doesn't make sense to uh, sum up all the prices, but also revenue and shipping columns. And then there's some other options here. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, but we can replace any current subtotals, we do page breaks, and then a summary below the data. The summary below the data is that grand total row. Uh, so we'll go ahead and leave those checked hit OK, and that automatically adds all of those subtotal functions, the subtotal rows. Uh, as you can see here, it says product A total, names that for us and everything like that. And it also adds the groups over here, the row groupings over here that we can quickly expand and collapse. And I can just even press the one there to just give me the grand total. I could press the two to just show the subtotals of all the products and the three to expand everything out. Or we can also just uh, individually collapse and expand these groups and all of the totals will be correct because we're using that subtotal function uh, with the correct function number the 1 through 11 function numbers there that again will still calculate even if the rows are either manually hidden or hidden by those groups so it's a great feature of Excel I honestly don't use it a ton because we can also use a pivot table for this which would be a bit more flexible so I prefer pivot tables over the subtotal feature uh, but it's good to know how the subtotal function works in these scenarios and then like I said in the previous video I covered how subtotal works in the total row of a table that's very important to know as well so if you haven't seen that video already go check that one out as well. So I hope this has been helpful. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment right below this video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.